we are on the fourth week of our series hashtag YOLO, you only live once. And today we have Pastor Victoria Sibia, also well known as Pastor Vic, who is sending us a message all the way from Uganda. She's originally from here at home in South Africa, but she's currently in Uganda. And she has sent us a prophetic word. She has sent us a prophetic word, and I trust that as you listen to this word, God will speak profoundly to you and personally to you, that you will feel God challenging you, that you will feel God inspiring you, you will feel ignited, inspired, and just with a sense of urgency to stand up and do something. It is a word that has encouraged me, and I trust that it will encourage, it will encourage you. Let us now go to, to the word. Grace and peace unto you, beloved. Good morning. My name is Victoria Sabia, better known as Pastor Vic. I'm really excited to be with you this morning to share a word. And I just want to say a special grace and peace to Pastor Koketo and the leaders of Muso Church. I'm really excited about this ministry because I really believe that God is has anointed this ministry for such a time as this. And uh, of course, I'm really elated to be part of this wonderful series, hashtag YOLO. <laughs> oh man, I remember when it first came out and it went viral, hashtag YOLO, everything had to do with YOLO. But of course, it took a turn and people just started living their lives very recklessly. But I'm glad that we have an opportunity to shine a different light on this hashtag. And I believe that God has given me a special word for you today. I actually believe that the Spirit of the Lord gave me a word and I've been meditating and thinking about this word for a very long time. I've shared it before and I think that I really believe that this word is for the nations. So I don't know where you are right now. You might be watching me from South Africa, which is where I'm from. But right now I'm in Uganda. You might be watching from here. You might be watching in Europe, in Asia, in, uh, in Africa altogether. You might be watching from wherever you are right now. But I truly believe that the Holy Spirit has given me a word for the nations. And that's what I want to share with you. I'm a missionary and I have the privilege of serving here in Uganda. I've been here for the past couple of months ever since uh, the pandemic and the lockdown and quarantine. I've been here and it's been such a joy for me. But also, I've heard the voice of God speak to me in many ways for different nations. And in light of these hashtag YOLO series, I will share with you what I believe the Holy Spirit has given me. So, you know, when you look at you only live once, I think that the, the most powerful word in that statement is the word once. If you look at scripture, Jesus only had to die for us once and for all. He appeared to us once and for all. Back in the day, you realize that the priest would go into the synagogue once a year to atone for the sins of many. And I've come to believe that one word from God can change your entire life. One word from him, one encounter with God. What just he, God just need your, needs your life once to change it forever. And I believe that the word that the Spirit of the Lord has given me might just be your one word for everything to change. This might just be your one word. So hey, share it with whoever you'd like to share it with. Um, but here we go. So if you look at the scriptures in the book of Luke, I, I love this story because uh, we, as Christians, we celebrate uh, Palm Sunday. And, uh, but if you look at it before, Jesus was on a mountain and he sends out two of his disciples and he says to them, go into the town and when you get in there, you will find a cult tied up. And um, bring that cult to me and whoever asks you anything, say to them, the Lord needs it. So before Jesus went in for this triumphant entry where he was just being glorified and praised, he was on a mountain. And on that mountain, he sent out his disciples to fetch him that donkey. Of course, the disciples did exactly what Jesus asked them to do. They went straight into the town, found the cult, as Jesus said, it was tied up. And all they had to do was untie that cult and bring it to Jesus. And lo and behold, of course, people around began asking questions and say, what are you doing? Why are you doing what you're doing? And they said, because the Lord needs it. Wow, the Lord needs needs it. I love that. So they untied the cult because the Lord needs it. Now, 
I believe the word that God has given me for use, uh, uh, prophetically even for many nations, God began to speak to me about how he's beginning to raise up deliverers. Raising up deliverers in different nations. And the word came to me and said, I'm about to raise up deliverers for the small kingdoms of the world. And I began to look into the small kingdoms of the world that the Lord is speaking to me about. And he started speaking about the economy. And God started speaking about different presidencies because then I saw a strong vision of a chair like a throne. And it was it, there was an exchange that was happening where an old leader and a new one would come and sit on it. But the deliverers that God is raising are people that are focused on the kingdom of God. They are focused on being stewards of the kingdom of God. So when God showed this to me yesterday in the morning, it was a, I, I had such a strong vision during prayer. And during this prayer, God decides to open up the clouds, open, almost as if he's opening up the heavens. So he opens up the clouds and angels begin to descend from the clouds. And God then decides to send these angels to different areas of the world and to different people. So he opens up the clouds and the angels have this assignment and they began moving to different places and different areas to different people. Then God said to me that these angels were descending to go and be with those deliverers that God is speaking to me about. Then it took me back to the book of Judges. In the book of Judges, when the people would cry out to God because there was something going on, they would cry out to God and the Bible says that God would raise up for them deliverers like Samson. Samson was a deliverer. The Bible says that uh, Samson, the power of the Holy Spirit came upon Samson and Samson was able to defeat the Philistines. And uh, you see Deborah, you see Gideon. The Bible says that uh, the Spirit of the Lord came upon Gideon and he was able to sound the trumpet and he was, they were able to defeat many armies. And stories like that are continuous in the book of Judges where you see God raising up deliverers in a time where uh, uh, people are suffering. In in a time where people are crying out to God because of their suffering and because of that God decides to raise for them a deliverer. Now God spoke to me and he said that he will begin to raise up deliverers for each nation. I saw the east, the west and the south and the north. No matter what area you're in in the world, I believe that God is beginning to raise up deliverers. And one of the things about these deliverers is that it is going to be very surprising the type of deliverers that God is going to be raising up. They're going to be the underdog. They're going to be the people you never thought will rise up in that way. I believe very strongly that God is, a, is in the middle of raising some up. God has already begun this. God has already begun raising up many deliverers. But I believe that this is a season that God will continue to do that for many. I agree and I know that it is not everybody that will be raised up in that way. But there are specific people that are focused on the kingdom of God and being stewards of the kingdom of God and fulfilling and making sure that the kingdom of God is established on earth. Those are the ones that God is going to be raising up as deliverers because their focus is on what God wants and not necessarily on the world uh, uh, or what the world needs or wants. But God is raising up the deliverers so that they can could bring the answer to the ills of the world. An example, I would say, this is from me, not from the Lord, but um, I, an example, I believe that God can raise up a deliverer of somebody who can figure out what is happening with this uh, pandemic and the COVID-19. I believe God can easily, easily raise up somebody like that. And I believe that God has already began raising up young deliverers who are writing books concerning the end times. Um, I saw that very much strongly in the spirit that God is raising up deliverers and these books will be for a specific time. I don't know, you might be that person who is writing that book to do with the end times. God is raising you up and he will speak to you as to when that book needs to come out. But it is time to begin. It is time to begin writing and seeking God for every single thing that he wants you to see in terms of vision. 
just like he did with Daniel, that the things he will be revealing to you, they will be only hidden for a certain amount of time. And when the right time comes, those things will be revealed to the world. Those are the kind of deliverers that God is raising up. Not just that, I see strong visions of many people writing songs. I've shared this before in one of my live videos and I said that God is raising people who are going to write very strong songs, musicians, and, and, and not just musicians. God is raising up uh, the fivefold ministry in a different way. It's not gonna be the same as many people have experienced. God is raising up the fivefold ministry in a completely different way, in a new level for this particular time. So, I would say to you, if you know that God has already spoken to you about writing, about preaching, about teaching, about prophecy, about evangelism, about uh, 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 all the fivefold ministry, God is telling you right now that it is time to rise up because God has already, is beginning to raise up deliverers. It's already inside of you. So what I believe that we need to do with the one life that God has given us, we need to spend it seeking after the spirit of the Lord, seeking after the power of the Holy Spirit so that everything that God wants to do on this earth through us, we are able to do it supernaturally through the power of God. Now let me talk about being untied and unleashed, just like the donkey that Jesus sent out. Jesus sent out the disciples to go fetch the donkey and untie that donkey. I strongly believe that God is beginning to untie many people from things that have been holding them back from pursuing the will of God. God is beginning to untie or unleash many people from, uh, uh, from things that have held them back. I don't know, you might have been held back by a form of depression, a form of mental, mental illness. There are things that you just can't explain in your life as to why they are happening to you. God revealed to me that some of the things that have been happening to many people are very spiritual. That God is going to begin to untie you from those things so that you would pursue and continue to pursue the will of God and the power of the Holy Spirit. Yes, you only live once. But let me give you some advice. I would rather live once seeking after the kingdom of God and seeking after the power of the Holy Spirit than doing anything else with my life. God is raising up deliverers who are intercessors, strong intercessors, who pray like no other. I know there is somebody like that. And God has already called you into deeper prayer, deeper fasting. It's okay that you have been fasting your juice or you have been fasting Netflix or chocolate or you've been fasting your phone or you've been fasting social media or you've been fasting two meals a day. God is calling you for deeper fasting, a, a deeper sense of fasting where you don't really care what's going to happen to you. I am not saying that you should be reckless with it. Let the Holy Spirit lead you. God is calling many into that kind of fasting. And also, God is calling us to immerse ourselves in the Word of God, that we would be completely emerged into the Word of God. Like the Titanic, when it began sinking, it was because the water started emerging from uh, going in from the inside and when the boat was completely emerged it began to sink I believe that God is calling us to immerse ourselves in the Word of God so much that we begin sinking into the the the, the wonderful sea of the of the Word of God and the glory of God so yes of course you do live only once but it is only once that God needs to change your life I believe that that donkey, because God called it out once for it to, I mean, we're still talking about that cult who, who was a ride for Jesus and Jesus only had to do it once. And I believe that God wants to do the same thing once for your life. So let me give you some ways for you to seek after the power of the Holy Spirit or to seek after the kingdom of God. Firstly, I believe that we need to immerse ourselves in the word of God. Immerse yourself in the Word of God. Be completely submerged. Be immersed in the Word of God so much that all your thoughts are renewed in a new way as to the Word of God. Number two, pray and fast. I'm giving you biblical truths. There is no other formula that I have. This is, this is true and this works. This is guaranteed. Immerse yourself. Number two, 
pray and fast. Pray, go in a little deeper. Press in deeper with your prayer. S uh, 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 seclude yourself, uh, consecrate yourself, make yourself holy for a time of prayer. Fast, fast so much that you are completely immersed in the spirit. And thirdly, I believe that we need to obey. Obey the Holy Spirit. Because as you begin to immerse yourself in the word, as you begin to fast and pray, the Holy Spirit's voice becomes so much louder in your spirit that you will know what the Spirit of the Lord is asking you to do. And when you do know and when you do hear, obey. Don't just be hearers of the word, be doers of the word of God. So let me repeat those three things for you again, in order for you to emerge, or rather for you to, to, to seek after the kingdom and seek after the power of God. Immerse yourself in the word of God. I know you've heard this before, but I'm saying this in a different time, because I believe that God has raised up many to know the times and know the seasons. And therefore what I'm telling you right now might not be new, but it might be for now. So immerse yourself in the word. Number two, pray and fast for it. Number three, obey the word of God. Immerse yourself in the word, pray and fast, and obey the Holy Spirit. And I believe that God will begin to move in your life strongly. You will begin to be untied from things that have been holding you back. And God only needs your life once. And I believe that this entire earth and this world will be shaken by people who are shaken by the glory of God. And the more you immerse yourself in the word and you pray and you obey, that's when you will begin to be shaken from the inside. And I believe it is only those that are shaken by the glory of God that can shake this world with the kingdom of God. Thank you so much for tuning in and listening in. Do me a favor and share this to whoever you think might want to hear this. God be with you. God bless you and keep you. Make his face shine upon you and be gracious to you and give you peace. Grace and peace, family.